Cecil.tv, Cecil Weekly. It's June the 19th, and I'm your host, Rob Churnside. Before we get started tonight, I have a couple things I want to run by you viewers out there in Cecil County. This is your radio station, Cecil.tv, I mean TV station. Duh. This is your TV station, of course. It just seems like radio. But um, we started in November, and we're seeking your input. What do you want us to cover? We're seeking you to become more involved. We have a rock similar to this, the Cecil.tv rock that's hidden somewhere in Cecil County at a secret location. All you have to do is find it, and you win big. So I'll give you a hint. Imagine a local golf course. Imagine me playing. Imagine where my ball lands. Not on the fairway, not on the green, somewhere close. That's where the rock is hidden, so if you find it, contact us. Moreover, we're going to be at the fair this year, the Cecil County Fair in the uh, end of July. And we'll be talking to you guys and find out what's going on. But right now, tonight, our first guest, Chris Brumel from Port Deposit. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, uh, you're quite welcome, and thank you for being here on, on yes. Cecil.tv, Cecil Weekly. You're the newly appointed town councilman for Port Deposit. That is correct. One of how many? One of six. Six, really? Yes. Yes, and the six, and then we have the mayor, so we have a, a quorum, so that any, any tied votes could be broken. Well, that's wonderful that you actually volunteered to become a uh, town councilman, correct? Yes, I did volunteer. I uh, learned that the position was available and open. Um, I have a desire to participate and give back to the people of the town where I live in, and so I approached them about it. and. From there on, the council unanimously agreed, and I was appointed to the position. Great. Yes. Now, as I travel about, and I mentioned that I'm f I am from Port Deposit, outside yes. of town. People usually, if they know Port Deposit, they usually know it's a one-street town, mm -hmm. parallel to Susquehanna River. What else really do people from not from around here associate Port Deposit with? Well, Port Deposit actually has a very deep history about the town. The town is very, uh, from the late 1700s even, and Jacob Tome, who the founder of the Tome School, there's the big granite quarries there. Our granite was quarried from Port Deposit and it actually traveled all over the world in different buildings. So it's very deep and rich history there. Um, lumber mills, shipyards, if you're familiar with back in the late 70s and early 80s, Wiley Shipyard yes, was yes. a big part of that town and a huge employer for the whole county of Cecil County. Uh, some of the sections of the Harbor Tunnel in Baltimore were built right there in Wiley Shipyard. And then after the shipyard left the area, of course, then the town has gone through a transition period to where now it has become more of a residential and resort, if you will, area with marinas and shops and restaurants, which are some pretty amazing places that yes. I would encourage people to come out and visit you know, and see what our town has to offer. I've eaten, I think, at every one of them, and they're all good. Yes, I would agree. Now, there's always, up on the hill, there's always Bainbridge. There is Bainbridge that exists there. Has been there for a long time and yes. still remains kind of a question mark, correct? It is still a bit of a question mark, actually. Um, you know, I can't fully comment exactly as to all the plans for it and what it could be. It, there are many options, and as a council member, I would be open to listening to the perspective of anyone who would have a proposal for what we could put up there, any uh, business, residential. So the options are, are endless, yes. really, for what it could be. And I know that you're also on the Parks and Rec Committee yes. and the Codification Committee, which is, has to do with codes and things like yes, that. Yes, codification is to learn the regulations and codes that are mandated from the state of Maryland for municipalities and governmental, uh, small town governments. So these codes are the things that we need to learn because these are what we operate and abide by. So. I'm just uh, being newly appointed, just beginning to get into all this, so I haven't delved 
into the depths of what all I'm going to find when I get into the learning all the codes. Uh, however, I do think, and some may say this is crazy, but I think it'll be interesting to learn it, um, to know and understand how things operate so you have a better insight and a better view of what's going on in the government around you. I sure. think uh, oftentimes that people do not fully understand just how involved it is even for a very small town like Port Deposit, like you say, a one street town, just how much goes on in that small town because you have many uh, residents there and so those people's lives need support in order to keep that town from water, water, sewer, utilities, all these things that have to be provided, uh, things that need to be maintained. It's, it's, it's a large scale operation but just shrunk down to a one street town. It all has to happen. It all has to and happen. you're a part of making that happen. I'm going to be a part of it. Yes. Your you have a term? Yes, a four year term as council. Good, great. Yes. Well, I know as, as having a port deposit address, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you on the watch and taking care of business down oh, there, absolutely. Chris. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Marina Park seems like it's becoming more of a presence in the town as yes, well. Yes, Marina Park is it's a wonderful park. We have a public boat launch there, pavilion. We have um, newly built uh, facilities for restrooms. We have a um, concession stand that is now open on the weekends with a, a really great young couple who are running that for us. Nice. And um, so we have a lot to offer there. Uh, we have a newly fully renovated what's called the gas house, which was the original house that where the fuel oil and heating oil for Jacob Thames Mansion was stored. And so that has just been fully converted now in conjunction with Towson University. Um, going to be a visitor center on the top floor. The bottom floor is where the Towson University uh, biology students will work out of with the map turtle project, which the map turtles are an endangered species that are indigenous to our area there in Port Deposit, and so they've kind of put us on the map, so to speak. Well, let's save the turtle, Chris, and yeah. always look for more in 21904 Port Deposit. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. Cecil.TV is looking for advertisers. If your business would like to reach the Cecil.TV audience with a message about your products or services, we would like to talk to you about our competitively priced advertising packages. And now for our next guest. I'd say he's an up-and-coming young photographer from Cecil County, but he's already there. Walter Dorsett. Walter, welcome to Cecil.TV. Thank TV. you. So, you have correct me if I'm wrong, 49,000 plus followers on your social media of your photography, correct? That's correct. So you're doing something right. <laughs> so, um, how did you actually get started in this? A young guy like you, and you're already established and already well known? Um, it all started, do you mean photography in general? Yes. It all started when I was eight years old. My grandparents bought me um, a film camera. And from there, I just never went anywhere without it. Um, and they would they would get my photos developed for me and you know I had a couple albums that they would put my stuff in so their encouragement really helped and then in high school I took photography courses up until 12th grade and um, you know when I got out of high school I was looking for something to do and you know I guess it's relaxing to me so you know it's almost like a therapy um, wildlife and nature in general so I started going out you know exploring around Cecil County and then um, I just started photographing everything and then I've just done it so much that I just have so much practice with it and um, yeah. So you have you have these followers but do you also do you like shoot weddings or events or how does all that work? Um, I used to I don't really do that anymore um, just because my landscape and wildlife photography has taken off so much that I don't really need to so basically I just make a living from print sales and canvas sales um, to you know locals uh, I've sold a couple prints to people in New York um, Wisconsin Florida you know stuff like that and a lot of the people that follow me are local so you know that's where I make most of my sales local so sales. you sell online um, basically it's through email you know I have all my prices on my website and everything like that but it's basically contact through email cell phone um, 
you can call me, you know, anything like that. But So for Neanderthal such as myself, how does one contact your website? Um, well, you just go to WalterDorset.com and it has my number, email, um, Facebook, Instagram. It has all my links to it. So you can contact me one of those ways. But okay. the most common way is through email. Okay. So you started when you were a young guy, seven years old. Did, are there people who you admire as photographers? Do you have influences that uh, we might um, want to share with us? I don't really have any influences as far as people I look up to, but I, because, you know, I like to think that my work's different than everybody else's. Um, but I have people that I definitely watch and, you know, see their work because I enjoy looking at, at photography myself. Um, one of them is Jay Fleming. He's a photographer out of Annapolis, Maryland. He does mainly like, he does wildlife and landscape photography, but he's mainly focused on like water-based stuff. So he, uh, he just finished a book called Working the Water, which was basically about the Maryland seafood industry. So um, he does a lot of like underwater photography and I can't swim and I'm near water a lot. So I'm afraid to go under the water, I guess. I can't even swim, so. But he does basically what I, I wish I could do a part of, I guess. I don't know. I like what he does. Well, that's great. Now. And he's local too, so. Do you, do you have stuff in local stores or? Um, no. No? Not at the moment. A, a few store owners have contacted me. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, getting the inventory and getting it to them. Right, so. but you do have something big coming up starting in September. Yes, I'm actually working on it now. It's the 2018 calendar for um, APG FCU. They give a free copy out to all of their um, customers. And um, it's an exclusive calendar, so it has 13 of my photographs. Um, they fill up the whole, they will fill up the whole front page, so it's almost like having a print. Um, there's only going to be a couple words on it, you know, where it was taken or whatever, but yeah, nice. it'll be, I think they're 8 by 12. And there's going to be a coyote photo on there? Um, no. You're still looking, right? Yeah, there may be a fox photo. Um, and I mean, they're all local, so they're all of Harford or Cecil County. Um, I don't really know what their choices are yet, but I have seen some of the ones that they like. So I've already sent them all of my, my choices. So we'll see what they pick. Well, you've certainly come a long way since seven years old. And how old are you now, Walter? 20. 20. 13 years, you've come a long way, and I think social media has played a role in that, has it not? Oh yeah, social media is crazy. Um, before I really got my Facebook, um, you know, got followers and got people sharing my stuff, I had about 400 local people, and they were, they were basically all my friends following me, and um, you know, I was still photographing what I do now, I just didn't have the people seeing it. So I joined a bunch of Facebook groups, um, gave out business cards, met people, like shot a couple of events and then, you know, people started to know me and then they started to share my work and I did a couple of print giveaway contests and, you know, all that just helps build your, your following. So I say Facebook has, has done a lot. I mean, in January, I re my Facebook page reached about 6.5 million people. Wow. And um, since then, it's about a million people a month reached. So it's pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, it, I think it helps promote tourism in a, in a way because you know everything that I post is local. It has the you know the location, um, and all those people are seeing it. So they're all, you know, almost seeing like an advertisement for local landmarks and stuff like that. Yes, and we have such a wonderful county. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget the five rivers of the Chesapeake that are yeah contained in our county. That's one of the many things, and I'm sure you're highlighting lots of stuff, bringing people's Premature, attention to yeah. Cecil County. What's next? Um, I don't know. Pretty much the same thing that I've been doing, I think, except just like on a larger scale. So um, basically everything that my followers have seen, I'm going to do more. So I, you know, everything that I've done, it, I don't really know if it gets better. It just gets different. Right. Um, like each phase of my, my work. So two years ago, my, pho my photographs and videos were a lot different than they are now. So I'm not really sure what the next year has in store, but I have a couple ideas, you know, in right. mind, so. Right, well, I'm looking forward to that. A APG, that's Aberdeen uh, 
credit union, right? Yes, yes, it's the that bank. calendar coming out in September. Mm -hmm. And they, they send about 20,000 copies out. So I'm really excited about that because that's like 20,000 people having my photographs and they're all local and that's what I love about, yeah. Yeah. about it all, it's local. Well, is there anything I missed, Walter? Um, I don't think so. I just wanna say thanks to everyone that supports me. Um, thank you for almost 50,000 followers on my Facebook page, it's amazing. And thank you. Thank you. And another special treat for your viewers. It's music time on Cecil.tv. Discover Cecil. Our guest, Rob Robinson from Northeast Maryland. Welcome to Cecil.tv. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me over. Oh, it, it, we are thankful that you right. made it here because you're busy. You're all over the place. You go on tour. Mm. You're doing a new album. Tell us a little bit about your music. Can you describe the kind of music you play as a singer-songwriter? You know, it, it's interesting. Uh, I, I just started out, um, a singer-songwriter came later in my life. I was grew up as a drummer, and, uh, and that was, uh, I would have never thought in a million years that, uh, you know, I'd be uh, slinging a guitar and telling stories at, at some point, but it happened, and it was very slow. Um, you know, and and I've just uh, grown in my writing over the years. I, you know, some when I recorded my first album, somebody kind of put it in an alternative sort of, you know, uh, vein as far as that goes. But I mean, I, I think as time is going on, it's just becoming just a more of a folk singer, you know, and just right. uh, trying to really just be honest about stories and and creative, you know. So. And you're doing a new album now, too. I'm working on it. I've been doing a new album for the last three years. But, uh, you know, in 2013, I released uh, Catching a Ride, which is my only um, release out there. Well, I actually released a couple singles in 2014. But um, Catching a Ride is uh, my only uh, album out. And um, I am just overdue. But it's been, you know, a discovery as far as writing is concerned. So I wanted to make sure the next one is, is just really uh, something special that uh, takes some time to, you know. Great. But, uh, so you live in Northeast. You haven't mm -hmm. always lived in Northeast. Will, no, sir. Will Cecil County be represented at all in your current work? Um, oh, it's always represented. You know, I, I talk a lot about, uh, you know, I love imagery in my, in my lyrics. Um, I talk about you know um, the rivers and the and the bay and and a lot of stuff that shows up in in the music and so uh, so yeah I mean, that's, that's great yeah, and yeah. it's such an inspiring area we live oh in. amazing amazing and you tour a little bit you were touring yeah. in Tennessee is that correct yeah. uh, I've done it uh, twice now and uh, it's pretty interesting as an independent uh, songwriter um, I don't have any record companies. Uh, paying me or giving me a budget to even record, let alone go on the road and right. promote it. So it's it's all self-promoting. It's a lot of work, uh, booking, and um, you know, in order to try to come home with some money, you have to try to call some friends and say, "Hey, I'm coming through town. Can I crash at your place tonight?" Right. You know, and and uh, but uh, I did a two-week tour uh, back in October, <clears throat> and uh, I spent. Um, some time in Southern Virginia, well, Richmond, Norfolk, Williamsburg area. And I actually have a friend who's in radio down there, and he, I do stay at his house, which is, uh, that's good. Uh, and, a, and a shout out to Barry Graham, actually, who produces Acoustic Highway on NPR, and he's, uh, he's been very kind to me and, and played my music. But uh, Tennessee, um, in the middle of the whole thing, I shot up to Evansville, Indiana, and then Coleman, Alabama, and I finished up in Memphis, uh, which is where I did a show with my friend Dan Montgomery, who came and played at the World Cafe with us on uh, Friday night. Yeah, yeah. I was just getting ready. To, yeah. We were talking about that earlier. You were Friday night, you were in Philly at the World Cafe. Mm hmm. Lovely venue. Great venue. Great venue. I mean, and uh, it's interesting because we were chatting a little bit before we, we came on and, and um, talking about. Uh, my days as a drummer, and uh, that was I, from the age of four, I played drums. So sitting behind a kit was always very comfortable. I'm, I'm sort of behind the rest of the band. Uh, it never really bothered me, but uh, uh, coming out front with a guitar and singing uh, is, uh, is a different story. And uh, around here in a lot of the small bars or you know clubs or where restaurants that I play in, 
it's it's pretty comfortable. I've gotten used to it. But when you're standing on stage at World Cafe and there's 150 people in the place and and the lights and the stage, it's a big it's a big uh, it's a big deal. And it was uh, I felt alone up there. I got to tell you, you know. But uh, once you get going, you get those uh, jitters out. But uh, it was a good show, real good show. We had a good time, and I did the show with uh, my good friend Dan Montgomery. And there's a whole story with Dan and I, but uh, Dan lives in Memphis these days, and I'll go down to Memphis and do a show with him down there, and he'll come up and we'll do one in Philly. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. certainly gonna be looking for you and your shows locally, and people can contact you. you and get your music. How do they do that? Well, uh, it's, it's in a few places. I mean, certainly the website is a good place to start, which is robrobinsonmusic.com. Um, I, I have a Facebook page, uh, music page, uh, which is just facebook.com forward slash Rob Robinson tunes. <laughs> it's hard to pick these things. And then um, uh, a CD baby, iTunes, uh, places of, uh, you know, all the uh, electronic kind of uh, right. places right. you can uh, you can pick up the music there. So, yeah. so you know, our producer, director, Doug Donnelly is a drummer as well. And that's how he and I met many, many years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, I walked in, and the first thing I saw was a sparkly aqua drum kit, and I was like, oh, okay, this, this is good. <laughs> so uh, I've already made an offer. On <laughs> so, what, Rob, what did we miss? I know, we're looking forward to hearing you play some tunes. Mm. Any foreshadowing there, or did we miss anything as we <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, I, I, you know, we, we, we covered uh, some good things, um, you know, uh, just basically right now, the, the, I'm very, uh, consumed with uh, trying to get this next uh, album together and um, it, it's tough because you got to raise the money for it and and uh, you don't want to you know I mean we can do a lot of things on our own these days with technology and yes. I have some I have a studio at home that I demo with and uh, that studio is starting to look more and more like it might be the place that actually right. produces the next album so we'll see how things go but uh, I'm going to be putting a lot of time into it uh, uh, probably starting in, in the next uh, couple weeks. So. Now, will you be playing guitar and drums on your album as well? Or? Well, you bring up an interesting point. Uh, I have done that. I did that on my first album. Um, but I'm considering actually having this be really stripped down, uh, acoustic, folky kind of singer-songwriter. Sure. Yeah, you know, because uh, I figure if I'm going out on the road by myself, I might want to have something that represents, you know, uh, the, you know, recording an album that would represent more of what I'm doing. That yeah. sounds quite mm. representative, and we thank you for representing Cecil County. All when right, you get out there. All right, Bob. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. All right, this is a song from my uh, CD called Catching a Ride, and uh, this song is called Let It Fly. Let it fly to where the truth begins. 
calls again upon a holiday of lights. I've got a peaceful offering and Jesus in my sight. While the snow is drifting high everywhere tonight, I drop down to my knees again and thank the loving God that brings me life. This is a song uh, that I wrote actually many years ago um, and is uh, was released in 2014 as a single. It's available on CD Baby and it's called Walk Away. Well, I've seen your face through the years of my living days. It's taken time, but I've come to see your ways every time. Walk away. Walk away. Well, I really know that you're good in these things you do. Can't deny there's a reason that I call on you. With your mind in the sand, you lost a man. Come to know and believe in my very own plan. Cause I walked away. Felt as good as I do today. 
Spent some time looking for a magic way Oh, I saw it in my mind It took my heart to say Walk away, walk away, walk away, away Never felt as good as I do today Spent some time looking for a magic way And oh, I saw it in my mind It took my heart to say Walk away.